Welcome back guys, Structure Studios 101, Pool Studio Blue. Let's pick up where we left off in video number one, part one of the Speedy House build from Google Maps. Guys, if you've seen the video on custom doors, I use this method a lot just to cut out walls in the house stage by using a window. So basically this one I want to be an arch. So we're going to share the pane here. We're going to click on window casing, share casing here, and then we just make our window whatever size that we want. So if we want to raise it up a little higher and then lower our arch brow down, we can certainly do that. Raise it back up. Once we get it to our desired size, we're going to remove window casing and then we're going to remove window frame. And then we have a cutout add your interior wall and then we are in business. We'll add some uh, sh custom shapes pieces to do some fillers here a little bit later. All right, so here we are. And so what we're going to do here is we are going to copy some materials over. Don't worry about those roof lines. We're going to hide all that with a custom shapes piece filler here in just a little bit. So here we want to bring this house uh, entry cover just past that fascia so we don't see any of that flickering Z fighting stuff. And let's go ahead and get this snapped in place here and we're going to make a stucco column and then we'll just kind of manually adjust them in place. So in custom shapes we're going to use the L shortcut key to turn on relative angle A shortcut key for a line and here we go we have our column in place and we'll adjust this a couple of times uh, throughout the video just to kind of get it exactly where we want to once we have the house uh, modeled and built there we go looks pretty good we're getting there and we're going to adjust this a little bit here and there we are so our final resting place we're going to make sure our snaps are all in place here we're going to snap it all together and looks pretty good so let's make ourselves some columns so we're gonna usually cycle columns gonna be 16 by 16 um, in the real world when they frame these out so that's what we're gonna make these um, I made this in house stage by accident but I just copied and pasted it into structure studios custom shape stage and here we are we have our columns in place and now we're good to go we just need to close this uh, section of the shed roof in add some filler pieces and then we are finished with this front porch of this speed build google earth home so basically what i do is i just add some um add some height to our roof and then we're going to take a couple of pieces just like this right here and just do a filler uh, because we only want this to fill up top. We don't want it to fill up uh, down below. Um, so we're going to use a little bit different method here. We're going to bring this all the way over. And I copied my roof portion before I did this. So copy, then move, and then control V paste. And now we have our roof back. And we just need to adjust our height. Back up to where we wanted it. And then add a couple of small filler pieces here. And then we're finished with this section. Again, there's a few different ways to do this. This particular method I'm doing this way. Um, so we'll get into some other methods at a later date. Right now, let's just focus on this because this is going to be the quickest, the easiest way um, to do these fillers um, and have them all match up. So the main reason is to build these in the house stage so that if you have siding or brick or stone or something like that then if you build it in the house stage and set all your elevations correctly then all your material will line up this one is all stucco so it really doesn't matter it's not like you're going to see any of the material anyway but just for future reference it's a good thing to you know get into a habit of doing it this way so what we're going to do here is we're going to go back into the house stage we're going to make some adjustments here Need to bring our ridge back a little bit so it kind of disappears into that. And there we are. That looks pretty good. Yeah, and we still have this hole here. So all we're going to do is just click this section and just drag it over to fill the hole. And that's going to cover our entire area. 
and it's going to give us a wall on the interior of the entry porch. So again, touch your uh, the fascia boards, and then we're going to add another piece here. I just copied and pasted. You can draw it manually; doesn't matter. Well, I do a lot of copy paste because it saves a lot of time for me having to draw. I just have to come in here and adjust the corners and I'm done. And that way I can customize it and fit it in place. So like this one here, I'm going to get it up in place. So you see a lot of Z fighting up there, so I'm just going to make it smaller. So again, touch your soffits. That's why grid snap again is the most important thing in Structure Studios when you're modeling a house. you got to have your grid snaps on. There we are, all done. And like I said, we'll hide this on the inside here shortly. And let's see what we got here. So that's our window size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make an arch in custom shapes. I'm going to draw this in 2D. So I'm going to draw me some lines. And here's my center point. I want it to go up four feet. And with the new grab handles in the custom shape stage, you can now adjust things in 3D. So it doesn't have to be like extremely accurate for these filler pieces or stuff like this. It just needs to be straight as long as it's snapped, you know, a, a line snapped. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this section. Let's just roll this back a little bit. And adjust it. Now we're going to adjust it in place. See the arch is a little bit off here. Not to worry, we'll manually adjust it. Turn off your snaps with the I shortcut key to do this because it just makes it easier. And then we're just going to manually adjust it in place. And you'll still see a little bit here, but that's okay. We can manually adjust this out. Just using the I shortcut key again to turn off the snaps when you're doing this only. It just makes it easier to adjust. And then you zoom in and just snap it as, well, it's not going to snap, but just get it right on the grid so that that line will, you know, be nice and smooth. This one in particular, I'm going to just drag this section down here and make a little bit of a reveal like it is on the property. We'll drag this one down a little bit. And then there we go. So now we just need to add a drop beam on the porch here. Um, it looks pretty good. We'll make some adjustments here. Um, what I'd usually do for that is I will rotate this in place, edit object so that it'll snap back to its edited form. Edit object. Now I'm just going to outline this with my grid and my snaps off, uh, my grid snap, and just my line snaps on. That way I know that this is going to be right on the money on that arch, and that I can fit this right in place and hide that. Um, what I would do here. Um, I, I don't think I showed it in the next video, but I just dropped the arch down so you don't see that fur down underneath uh, the patio. It's just a straight uh, barrel ceiling from the front to the back, and it looks a lot better. Uh, the arch is a little bit lower at the front entry. All right, so let's see what we got here. So we're still making a little bit of adjustments here. Like I said, just kind of tweak it and adjust it. Um, only when you're adjusting it in 3D do you want your snaps off. Otherwise, leave your snaps on, especially if you're drawing straight lines. Here's a drop beam. I'm just going to raise this up in place. I to turn it off so I can rub that back. And we're going to fine tune it here in 2D with our snaps on and get that nice drop beam look in place. That's what's going to give you that realistic look when you're building and modeling your homes and structure studios. There we go. So nice and tight. So let's look at the back. We're going to do these three columns here and finish off our porch. So again, I'm just going to copy the one from up front. It's going to be a 16 by 16. And I'm just going to snap it to the corner. And I'm going to snap to the corner. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make my drop beam and then use my center point right here to copy and paste my third beam so that I know that I'm right in the center. Because when you're designing, you know, the position of these columns is going to be critical for line of sight, um, you know, where your windows and doors are, you know, how you're going to design your walkways, your hardscapes, and that sort of thing. Now, this, this particular property, I, like I said, I just randomly grabbed this property. Um, I threw a dart against a map, Google Maps, and this is the one that I picked. So this is going to be the floor for the for the patio here. 
And if you look at the, if you see that, you can see that the decking does not come out past. So I put the down, I made the decking one inch back so that you see the columns in front. Then we'll just change this material so you can kind of see where we're, there we go. Now there you are. So now you have the column reveals and the decking behind it. So let's work on this little piece here. So we're going to go you know, make sure our line snaps are on. What I usually do is I will get my angle like, like so. And then I will draw me a guideline from this point all the way across so I can snap to it. So I don't so this is nice and symmetrical. So the pro the problem that you're going to have if you're if this is not snapped and everything is something is out is that these ridges for this type of roof you're going to have these voids in them. So the 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 geometry will be off. Um, so it's just always good to you know to draw guidelines for yourself just to kind of keep everything lined up and square so you don't have those weird uh, geometry errors that you have. So here, another explode and weld. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come around. I'm making my lower walls because I want that on the inside to be totally open when I put my windows in. So here we're just going to start detailing it out. You know, the house model is complete. Now we're just starting to add the windows. We're going to put in the doors. We're going to do little details, um, add the railing, uh, start working on the terrain. We're going to put the retention uh, pond out back. We're going to throw in some draft houses and just kind of finish the model off. So again, this model took me about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes max to draw this from start to finish. Um, and you know, that's with all the details, the importing, everything. Um, I, I did edit this down, you know, just to kind of, because it, it was a long video. That's why I had to make it in a few parts. Um, so you can watch it in you know in segments if you want. Um, so yeah, total it, it you know it didn't take very long to do this house. A relatively simple house if you know the methods on how to put the certain roof lines together, like shed to hip attachments and filler pieces. Um, you know your archways uh, for your for your entryway. You know drawing uh, your um, custom arches. Um, just different filler pieces like that, you know, just little things like that. So the detail is very critical. Um, but again, if you if you spend the extra time, you know, spend an hour, hour and a half on a model like this, uh, you, you can you can do it. Um, it's just understanding and knowing the methods, how these things snap together, um, and just basic general construction knowledge of a house. Um, will go a very, very long way. So here, uh, we're just gonna be out into outlining the driveway that's there. We're gonna follow the sidewalk up here. This is not gonna be perfect. Um, this, nothing is snapped here. Um, I'm just kind of free handing this um, so that we can, you know, have for presentation purposes, basically. Um, if you're doing a front yard and a backyard, let's just say we're landscaping the front yard, or let's just say we're designing a new driveway, paver driveway, or something like that, um, you know the street is going to be important. You know you need to know where it's at, you need to know where the sidewalk is, so that you can you know design properly. Um, so again, it's it's not very, it's not really that critical for this one here. Um, so I'm like I said, I'm just kind of quickly uh, drawing this uh, the decking and the street in there. Nothing's really snapped until I start touching the house, and then I snap, you know, my lines. Uh, but for everything outside, you know, it's just um, it's just for demonstration purposes and method purposes only. I like to use the asphalt for concrete because it looks actually better than the concrete. So here we are. And let's add a door. I probably like the double door better, so we'll change that later. And we're going to add some windows. Now, this is generic because I don't know, um, I can't see anything um, on the front. So I have no idea where those windows are. I would assume that there would be a window in between each one of the columns. Or there might be a, a full light, you know, full window up there. I have no idea. Um, again, that's why uh, gathering proper field data, uh, photos of the home, 
if you're going to be modeling um, the home and structure studios, then it's going to be very, very imperative that you get your proper fill data and um, you know your elevations here. This one does drop down toward a retention pond. So if you were actually designing um, hardscapes, and decking, terracing, and the, you know, retaining walls, that sort of thing, you would have to no doubt know what those elevation changes are. So field data is 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 imperative. Now, you, what I'm doing here is just this is no data whatsoever. This is straight up Google Maps. I have zero information on this house, no field data. Um, just Google Maps is just it, just bottom line. So can it be done? Yes. Is it going to be accurate? No, it's not going to be accurate. Um, so it's, you know, it's just one of those things. That, I mean, if you like revisions, then you can use Google Maps all day long to build build models. Uh, you know, I hear a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm just doing it for this is just for visual purposes." For well, so what do you do when you are ready to, you know, start drawing your construction documents, or when you start laying out your pool or hardscapes, or, you know, you got to go back and just revise, revise, revise. Oh, this is not going to work. Oh, I didn't know this elevation change. Oh, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Well, that's just a lot of waste time, guys. So always, always, always at least get a property survey, um, shoot some transit. It'll take 45 minutes. Spend 30 minutes out on the, out on the property. Um, you know, it'll it'll go a long way. It'll help you with your modeling. It'll help you with your designing. It'll help you in your construction. It's just a huge time saver because you are, you know, all of this data. You're extremely accurate because you went out and gathered this field data yourself. So, um, can you do this with Google Maps? Yes, you can. I'm doing it here. Is it better to go and gather your own data on the site? absolutely 100 percent because you cannot rely on google maps for any type of accuracy whatsoever um so you know just just keep that in mind it's always it's always good to gather your own data so this is uh this is it we're adding our 3d grass uh we're going to change our background here let's put in some hills with trees that's the one i like just kind of fill the horizon and then we're going to set ourselves up for part three of the video and we'll pick up right here and we'll start adding on the little details that's really going to make it pop like gutters and you know we'll put some banding on it uh you know we'll add in a pool or some hardscapes uh we'll do uh we'll do a fire pit or something like that we'll put in the uh, we'll put in the retention pond out back we'll throw in some draft houses and just kind of spend that extra 20 minutes on just kind of detailing it out and getting it ready for presentation that way when you sit down to present yours is going to be hands down better than the other nine three two or however many that the client had so stay tuned for part three coming up thanks guys